A pleasure to have you join us. Good morning and welcome to Off the Press, a program where we take a look at the headlines and try to decipher what is behind them. I have two people with me in the studio. Bolaha Olojede, thank you very much for joining us. Good to be here. And we also have Femido Adigoke, thank you very much for Good joining us. Good morning. Okay, we'll begin with the Nation newspaper. And the big one here is out a outrage over banishment of the post Emir Sanusi. Outrage over banishment of the post Emir Sanusi. It has um, some writers, lawyers, Atedo others, confinement illegal, ex Emir relocated, the rulers seek comfort uh, for former monarch. We also have inside details you find on page 2, 3, and 41. Stocks lose 985 billion naira in two days, and uh, Makende warns criminals as Amoteko becomes gets legal backing. Uh, we also that's all your state, by the way. APC crisis parties party chiefs at secretariat no NWC meeting. Let's flip to the top of the paper. There you have it, uh, why NUC stopped Unileg convocation, Varsity Council sidelined, and then Lagos threatens closure of Ladipo market, others 240 days rain coming. And then Buhari, 3.7 billion naira cash stolen from NDDC recovered, 6 billion assets frozen. On the back page of the nation, we have something on APC's cause an own goal. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, an interesting goal goal <laughs> continuity and change in Oshu's education policy. That's some things for you. Uh, let's talk about this um, leopard skinned dressed men on the front page of the paper. The uh, Motekun thing. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of seeing it. <laughs> I just want them to get into Get the, on with yes, it. Get on with it and uh, stop all the dramatizing. All right, then, let's look at the big one. Uh, the banishment of the deposed man sounds more like something that belongs to Shakespeare era. Really? You know, uh, yeah, the medieval period. Well, it was a law. Uh, yes, they used the, the law. Uh, well, uh, the law. The law has been. The court has spoken to the law in the Jacolo, uh, uh, Mustafa Jacolo case, in which he was banished, likewise. And and what the court said was that you cannot banish a man from his own country. He should be free to move around. Uh, when you look at it from the perspective of, um, okay, can you have two captains in a boat? Yes, Kano might be a bit dicey. You, you, want, you probably don't want the, the throne emir and the reigning emir to be living in houses that are beside one another. But then if I'm not in Kano and I'm, not, I'm no longer the emir, why should I be confined? That's, that's imprisonment, technically. You put him in a place and you say you can't get out of the confines of this place. For what crime committed? Uh, Afemi, do you see his lawyers making headway with the reversal, uh, even if not the reversal of the dethronement, but and uh, removing the banishment from uh, the whole saga? Yeah, I think um, the lawyers, I agree with 100% what he said, and I think the lawyers have spoken that they're going to challenge him. The, they, the lawyers are even saying they are going to speak to him about the dethronement and get his views on that, but they are going to challenge the banishment. You cannot... You have dethroned him, at which the man has accepted. And you cannot now say you're now going against his fundamental human right. You have banished, uh, you have dethroned him as the as the emir. He's free. He should be a free man. But you, like he said, you don't want, you might not want him in Kano. But the man has right to go to any other place. But now you're taking him to a remote area to keep. All right. We don't know why. Yes. Do you have any other headline aside it, it, this big it, it, one? Let me, just one more comment on that. Okay. Um, I think it's also getting more interesting because now that he's no longer the emir, so if he, you don't have a law to hold him where you have kept him right now, when he gets unleashed, so he can move from Kaduna and take up talking engagement in Abuja and come to Lagos, Lagos. and be in New York and be in London, you have, you, you have things to contain ahead of you. <laughs> that, is, that is the reality. <laughs> okay, let's, let's look at other headlines. Let's talk about this NDDC um, unveiling of things by Bukhari. Yeah, the 3.7 billion cash stolen. I, I, don't, I don't know whether this is cash as in cash. If it is cash, cash as in cash, then 
we cannot just be saying this. If people have actually taken 3.7 billion naira cash stolen, it's not just about recovery. It goes beyond recovery. Who are the people? They need to be punished. You can't take 3.7 billion from the kitty and then you say, oh, we have recovered it from them. And so what? After recovery, what happened to the people that did the stealing? All right, uh, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper. Uh, the the Sanusi is also on the front page, but let's just uh, look at how it's presented. Uh, Sanusi to challenge detention, forced exile. Canu continues 2.2 billion naira fraud probe. Uh, details on page two. A couple of writers to that story. Again, McKinday signs a automobile into law, warns criminals. Um, more stories. The Ocean Assembly proposes debt for killer kidnappers. Let's start with that before we go to others. Debt for kidnappers. Is it, uh, Femi, uh, is it something that uh, you agree with? Well, in my opinion, I do agree with it. I do agree with it. Even though in Nigeria, it's, uh, even when you're sentenced to death, it takes forever for the governors to sign. They uh, rarely do. Yeah, they really, they, they really do. But um, for what uh, Ocean State is trying to do, is more of a deterrent. If you have such law in place, maybe, maybe not, it will deter people from going into such act of kidnapping. Equity fires teachers for allegedly impregnating 17-year-old people. The story seems to be coming up in different variations. There seems yeah. to be a spike in sexual crimes in this no, country. I think it is the consciousness. Those sexual abuse issues have always been there yeah. for ages in memory. Yeah, but there seems to be a spike in real, particularly because when it comes are, to those that you're for those that you're caring for. It's more like you have um, a, a fiduciary a relationship. Yeah. Somebody who look up to you for one kind of trust or the other. Mm -hmm. My friend's father, an uncle, a, you know, all those kind of relations. But they've always been there. Always there is a advantage. renewed consciousness about making this news. This wouldn't have been news some, some, a couple of decades it ago. Is, yeah. It's something they will set through in the family. Yeah. They don't want thing, it okay? to be out. That's, that's the way it has been, but it's becoming a different perspective now. I mean, people are talking. All right, uh, let's see some other headlines still here. Internet fraud, a court orders forfeiture of Habilist's building. Uh, Lagos Assembly seals sacked lawmakers' offices as crisis worsens. At the top of the paper, we have Senate queries a $4 million payment to lawyer from ECA. Uh, stock markets, investors lose 656 billion naira in one day. And then petrol imports gulped 1.7 trillion naira in 2019. That's MBS. A border closure, customs make 697 arrests, 7.4 billion naira seizures. On the back page of the punch, we have when lawmakers fear the law. Stock market investors lose uh, the 656 billion in one day. I think I, think I saw a different figure uh, in the um, other paper. Okay, so it says 985 nine billion in this two is, days. This is, this is, this is in, in one, one day. day. This is in two days. Um, Monday, the world woke up to the bad news of crash and oil price. Um, you know, by almost 30%. Yeah, but if the, the good part was that on Tuesday, it rebounded a little bit. Now, that crash in oil price was also followed by crash in the stock market. Of stock market across the world lost Due to money. The coronavirus. Yes. Nigeria is not immune from those. Uh, but here is where Nigeria's case could get more complicated. When things like this are happening and there's uncertainty in the oil market, then there will be capital flight from those oil burdened or oil exposed currencies and economies into safety. That could put us in trouble as far as foreign exchange is concerned. We could also further run into trouble from the perspective of the fact that the chunk of our foreign exchange earning is from oil. So once the price of oil crashes, it means we are not earning as much foreign exchange as we used to earn that puts further pressure on the Nigerian exchange rate. These are really challenging times. Honestly, uh, if I have my way, this will be the number one discussion on there in every gov at every government level in Nigeria well, the today. president has set up a committee uh, made up of the Let's finance minister to review committee. the 2020 budget. Isn't that something? Because uh, <laughs> the oil price has dropped. You see, budget is just one thing. 
It may be good because at the end of the day, we might be able to see some facts that we need to remove. For example, 37 billion to repair some building somewhere. You know, but beyond <laughs> that, the complexity of the case we have at hand is much beyond uh, 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 budget uh, adjustment. I just, I just discussed the exchange rate pressure that is, that is going, going on. on. There is a fact that manufacturers are in trouble. Ooh, yeah. Others have been placed for raw materials and spares. They cannot be delivered because they are trapped in China. You even have infrastructure that cannot be delivered on schedule now because the Chinese workers travel to China and they are locked down in China. China, true. A lot is going it's, on. It's, it's yeah. complex. Uh, Alfemi, which of these would you want to take on? Well, um, on the Senate, on the queries, the, queries the, the uh, Accountant General of the Federation was at the Senate yesterday with the Committee Financial Committee. And he gave, they were asking questions on the depleted uh, excess crude account. And he actually gave account how money had been taken from the account. And he just mentioned the legal fee of $4 million. And the question was to who? Which he promised that he will bring, he will produce a name and details by next week. But my question is, you're coming to defend how you're spending and you are not prepared for such questions. You should come, when you're giving accounts or you're giving details of how you have spent, you should come with all the details because all the, you were able to give details of other aspects but you, and the chairman for the committee, financial committee was really enraged yesterday because of that singular act. I mean, How can you not be able to give details of who <laughs> the lawyer that got this? So it, it's, it's, um, it's sad in the country that we are that we just have people that just display so much irresponsibility in government. You, you want to add something to that? Four, four million on. dollars is over a billion naira. If you pay that in fees to anybody, that name and the reason for the payment should be on top yes. of your head. That means something, you're trying to say something is not right. It's not right. We, I think we are fighting corruption. Interestingly, we even the Senate has a role in this. The way and manner in which ECA has been operated, yeah. I don't think we have a robust law guiding how that account runs. So the executive makes the decision on what to do, what to buy, what not to buy from that account. That's why we're having all of this. It should be structured. All right, this day newspaper is next for review as Sanusi challenges legality of banishment, heads to court. Uh, that's um, on the front page uh, on your screen. And above the masthead, of course, the issue of ASU again. Uh, federal government ASU meet over warning strike tomorrow. Uh, I guess that's today, actually. Or who knows, tomorrow. That's what the paper <laughs> says. Let's go with that. Oil price moves to... $37 after Russia's signal on OPEC talks. House checks impact on the economy. We have no solution to crude oil theft, says LNPC. Uh, there's a picture of um, smiling faces on the front page, yeah, President Inclusive. I don't know if you can flip to it so uh, you can see there you have it. Uh, history maker, that's the caption. You might want to go look at it. Um, Medical Women International Association, I think uh, that story ran a bit. We're battling coronavirus, Buhari assures health workers. Second virus patient moved to Lagos. Unilag Council faults VC, backs NUC over suspension of convocation. And then on the back page of the paper, we have coronavirus and common humanity. Uh, Kayo de Komolafe is the one talking on the horizon uh, this morning. Remembering an optimist, I used to be one. So what's your Let's optimism away? Talk um, we'll talk about that after the <laughs> <laughs> review. Okay, let, let me come back to you, Femi. Uh, which of these ones would you want to take on? Okay, um, the, we, are, we are battling coronavirus, uh, as sure as health workers. Um, well, I must commend because few people who've traveled out have come back with some kind of good report on our airports, on how um, measures are being put in place to check people in and out and ask questions where they've been and then actually actually carrying out the tests at the airport, which we need, um, we need to commend the Ministry of Health and the federal government for at least doing that. And then we're able so far We've been able to contain the 
virus spreading. Have we really? Because I hear there are some unknown persons still. Their names were listed because they provided um, wrong information, uh, contact information. Um, if these people actually were able to get the virus, uh, as of now, how, um, how many people would they possibly have infected? Yeah, yeah, because it takes, uh, I think it takes 14 days for the virus to manifest. But the good thing about uh, it's about 157 people were on flight with the index case, and I think over 100 and something of them have shown up for test. So that's why that's what, that's what I'm saying. We must commend the, the effort. Yes. Um, Bolaho, your thoughts? Oh, the oil price moves um, after after the slump on Monday. Uh, mm -hmm. At yesterday's trading, uh, it went up. Oil price went up from 34 to 37 dollars. And why did it go up? Because the two elephants that were fighting, Russia and Saudi Arabia, there were certain signals that maybe they would talk. And the shame for us, or the, let me say the challenge for us, is that as a nation, we have to be watching the mouth of Russia and Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. to determine the fate of uh, us yeah. as a country. Uh. We must go beyond the rhetorics of diversifying the economy base of Nigeria into the reality of the game. I'm afraid that's where we'll stop now. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Thanks You're for welcome. Having us. And thank you for staying with us. We hope they were able to shed some light on the headlines. But please do go find a copy of the paper. Read it online if you must. Um, but I encourage you to go uh, patronize your vendor. Take a look at the story so you're better informed. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.